We were in, we had a separate account with a hedge fund manager. We were never invested in their hedge fund product. That was FX Concepts. And it was on the currency overlay program. And we had a separate account. FX, we lost the money, but not in hedge funds. What I'm saying is it wasn't a hedge fund product. That this was not a loss in hedge funds because we were never invested in their hedge fund product. It was a company that sold hedge funds, and we never purchased the hedge fund product. We set up a separate account for currency overlay. Ownership of hedge funds. I just wanted to get a reaction. I mean, this was sort of delayed a month, but it sounds like you had some productive conversations before the meeting, and are you pleased with kind of the way things went today? I'm pleased. I think having more disclosure, and, and we're all about openness in San yeah. Francisco. So you, it, it gives me an opportunity if there was any confusion. Right. You know, I got the fossil fuel votes that I was, they were able to verify them and I was able yeah. to verify. So that surprised me that that was a big part of the discussion yeah. today. I mean, is that something that you, it sounds like you think going forward is, is going to be something that the board can It's important, yeah, I yeah. think it's important. For I think all boards are looking at that issue across yeah. the country. It's, it's social investing. Right. You know, should we be investing in timber? Is there a way to do that that, that is um, socially, um, that we're comfortable with yeah. in San Francisco. And, and it just, again, it just happens that it's an area that I've spent a long yeah. time in. Yeah. Um, and I just wondered, I mean, you mentioned at the beginning you were kind of reticent to take on this role. Has this made you, given you any more pause? Well, I think a lot of people are saying, oh my God, you have to go through this. Yeah. Why do you do it? I do it because, you know, my husband is retiring. And I think it's important to oversee the pension fund in, in the best manner, manner, manner possible. Yeah. Um, and I have uh, experience, 30 years experience in the area, and I feel like it's, I feel that I can make a positive contribution. Um, there are areas I know that, that uh, uh, to look for where, where there could be problems, and if I can convey those and hopefully help the fund achieve better results, that's my goal. How many, how many times, uh, Ms. Pascal, how many times have you had to accuse yourself in the uh, Um, I think that she's. No. How many times have I, some of them I had have to recuse, I asked to recuse myself. How many votes did I uh, recuse myself in? One time, and that was with the mortgage and investment. Yeah, with the bank, bank, because my and husband had owned a bank stock. She had her husband owned stock in Bank of America, and she tried to recuse herself and left the room. There was another time when BGI, which is one of our managers, came up and she disclosed that she had formerly been on the board of BGI, and the city attorney said that she'd been off the board long enough that she didn't have to refuse herself. On the issue of the favor, you say that because you received the favor before uh, so you were on the board that you were entitled to? It's not to. a special favor. It's something that all firms in my area, when they hit a certain threshold, they have the ability to get into certain mutual funds that are public funds under a minimum. So if you went to Schwab today and you wanted to buy uh, a $5 million BlackRock fund, it has that minimum. If you went through a registered investment advisor, you would not have to hit that minimum. But it's you, just the way the rules wasn't are. Wasn't there a minimum investment of $10 million to, to, to invest in that? That's right. And, 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 Prior to that, my firm, some of them aggregate the amount of assets you have with the firm. And so my firm had hit that threshold of $10 million. Therefore, after that, which was 10 years ago, I had the ability to get in without a minimum in that so fund. So you already invested in that. And that's why you got the favor. It's okay. not a, you can explain that it, it's not a favor. Well, it's a rather common it, it, yeah, it's it's a, a, yeah, it, for a registered it, investor. For instance, if you went to Matthew's Asia Fund in San Francisco, and if I said, I want to invest in that fund, the $3 million minimum fund, they would say, the only, you, you can't do it unless you have $3 million, unless your firm aggregated $3 million. And at that point, then any of your clients, not a special favor, anybody in your firm, and any RIA who hits that threshold, 
could have the ability to enter Matthews Asia under the five million, the three million dollar limit. I'm not concerned about hedge funds in the sense that in 2008, a large number of hedge funds had problems because of speculative investments, derivatives. Do uh, you think that there might be a problem of investment in hedge funds as a result of that? I think that it's an area we need to be very careful in, and that's why on the board I asked to see the exact hedge fund managers. Some are very risky, uh, some have gone under, as they have in the public area, as they have in private equity and venture capital, real estate. I mean, they're good funds and they're bad funds. It's a tricky area, and that's why I think we have to study that area very carefully. And so I am as I, I think it's very prudent if you're going to advocate to get into hedge funds come tell us which ones you want to get into obviously George Soros has had an incredibly profitable hedge fund um, some are riskier than others and we need to understand that risk before we even venture into that area well, Warren Buffett has said that he's against public pension funds investing in hedge funds why would he say that if you didn't think that there was a problem I, know, I, um, I think that Warren I think that Warren Buffett is feels that it is a very difficult area. There aren't that many great hedge funds. And when there are, like George Soros or, or Leon Cooperman of Omega, they have such high minimums, they may not even want our money. But we have to look at their return, and we need to understand how they did in years like 2008. And that, to me, is something we really need to study because we lost 30% in managers that weren't hedge funds and more during that time. So I think I'm not saying let's go full bar on hedge funds. I'm saying. Tell us to the staff if you want to do that in any area. Give us the evidence that we feel secure as a board to enter into that. Like, are the hedge funds transparent? I mean, there's some issue about yeah. that you don't know what you're right. investing if you have investments in hedge funds. And yeah. Therefore, you wouldn't know if they're investing in fuels or raw materials or something like that. Is that an issue to you? I think transparency is a huge issue. And I think so that we need to go because they're working that they're trying to do. I think that, that we need to demand transparency. Do you, know, I mean, you think that it's a good thing to, for people who make money from investments in hedge funds and other mm -hmm. investments should be on a pension board? I think that if we, it would be very valuable if, I mean, I don't have a huge amount of experience, but it, it, if we had people who really did have experience with hedge funds because if uh, they could actually help us with the pitfalls because there are pitfalls in any investment, I think that knowledge would be very beneficial. I personally don't invest in hedge funds that they're, 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 they tend to use.